guys got those. This is a uh, real quick. I'll, I'll explain to you guys. This is your uh, basically your. I call it the storyboard. It's sort of like the quilt of your adventure. So you see these like planks of wood that we have here. I do this in all my games, so maybe I might change it up for this game. But if you guys want anything to put on the board to kind of remind yourself of the journey that the party's had, please feel free to let me know. So if any of the, the bosses that we encounter, any of the actual NPCs that you encounter, please let me know if you guys want any of those tokens up here or, or anything. And this is sort of going to be like your quilt as you patch it together. You know, it's it's uh, kind of cool. It's sort of like a like a reminder of what you guys have done as a party. So I think it's a pretty good idea. So I, I've incorporated it into all my games. And uh, I, I actually, I'm a little disappointed in my Essentials group and this group. Oh well, not this group. I'll I'll, I'll wait till next week to make that comment. But wait till we start. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But I mean, my not not the Pathfinder group, but my D and D uh, next group. They didn't do anything with theirs. They didn't do nothing with theirs. So uh, my fourth edition game, they have the baddest storyboard. I mean, they are they really are into that. So and I'll show that off. But to give you guys some some ideas next Thursday. But I've seen you, it yesterday. Yeah, you guys can put anything you want on that on that board. I mean, anything. So just to let you know that this is to kind of you know remind you guys of, of your travels. So yeah, if yeah, there's anything your characters corner, want, want anything, anything, just let me know. Uh, all the all the lucky ladies who I get to bed down, I want little icons and scratches on the wood up here. That's uh, we can do it. We I'm can sorry, do it. The ranger shrink. Yeah, everybody shrunk a little bit. Hmm. Okay. All right. So you guys, I'm gonna move you now. Uh, you guys are here on the inner sea map. This is the. This is a huge, massive place. Yeah, I saw the other day. It's nice. I mean, this this place is massive. Yeah, you guys can see this. This place is massive. I mean, you you guys are gonna start. You could you can, and and this this map has not been enlarged or anything. This is, like I said, this is the equivalent of the Forgotten Realms, which uh, the Forgotten Realms map is huge. And I'm gonna bring you guys to where you're starting. All right, you guys can see uh, straight up north of Andoran. Sort of looks like India sticking out there. You can see up there called Falcon's Hollow. That is where you guys are starting. And you can see in the handout section, there is a Falcon's Hollow handout. And the Falcon's Hollow handout has all kinds of information about key places within the town. I'll be adding more as well, but I uh, just haven't gotten uh, everything done that I've wanted to get done this week. So uh, next, there is the Dark Moon Veil. Vale. The Dark Moon Veil vale is actually the small little region that you are in, actually within Andoran. So you guys are pretty much on the northern border of, of Andalin and uh, Andorin. And the Five Kings Mountains are, are to the north and to the northeast. Then to your, your west you have, uh, uh, I think it's Aspidel Mountains. And uh, it's basically huge mountain ranges that basically surround Andoran, except for to the, uh, to the east. And it's just basically, you know, land, uh, more land for us. And I think it's Taldor or Teldor or something like that. So, but like I said, this is a, a new setting. I'm still learning the setting as well, so I'm, I'm reading a lot about the lore, uh, but I'm not 100% versed yet. So some questions I may have to say I don't know yet, but I'll, I'll get you some kind of answer down the line. So, all right. So you guys haven't played Pathfinder. I haven't played Pathfinder. So we're all learning this together. So if we have any, any kind of uh, rule disputes or anything like that, We'll just write it down, and we will address it after the game. So I don't like to stop the game and you know bullshit about rules for for five minutes. That's not the the whole point of the game. The, the point of the game is have fun, and I and I hate 
when the rules get in the way of having fun. So we'll have fun. It's like we do that in all my games. We'll we'll always you know write rules, write things down, and check it after the game, and we usually get everything rectified. Wrecked them, damn near killed them. Okay, so you guys are here in Fox Hollow, Fo Falcon's Hollow. I'm sorry, Fox Hollow. Where the hell did I get that? You guys have basically been within Falcon's Hollow for a while. Uh, you've all congregated, but for actually first, I want you guys to actually introduce to one another, seeing that you guys have have basically you haven't really adventured yet. But I, I'll tell you how you've actually met. So because we're going to kind of speed up the the process to we're going to start learning mechanics. So we're going right into it tonight, guys. So uh, what I want you guys to do is kind of just go around no particular order and just uh, introduce your character and uh, tell us about your character as well like the background story and so we can kind of uh, get a feel of who everyone is playing and your class well, and stuff like that well uh, I'll start <laughs> first uh, Gim is a dwarf Gimli, Gimli. Uh, I love it after, uh, uh, brother. sorry for the guys and uh, I always like to try to follow him when he took off and my dad would beat me with a stick and say get back here boy so uh, <laughs> I'm growing up now and I'm becoming a venture and I'm, now you're going to beat your dad with that stick right no he did no oh oh alright oh, got his ass next Oh, I'll, I'll jump in then. Blixwise is a uh, halfling cleric who, uh, whose uh, cleric's uh, thirst for adventure finally overcame her, overcame his, uh, his, uh, his uh, faith as a cleric, and so he decides to just go on adventuring, hopefully do some good while he's uh, seeking fame and fortune, and he's uh, and he came over. Came to the barn with, with the bar with a, with a thirst with a need for, a, for a good pot of uh, meat and uh, some uh, little, little snack for his uh, pet chinchilla that he has in his cloak. And the sitting duck is a perfect establishment to get an ale, and something to grub. Yeah, exactly. And that's where you guys are at the sitting duck. So the next person can go. So he uh, eats with one hand, oh. feeds his pet with the other. You plan on eating that chinchilla, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to ask you that. <laughs> it's his icebreaker for chicks. Oh, sort of like the the baby. Yep. Or the puppy. Okay, I guess I'll go next. Uh, Melville is a uh, an elf ranger. Uh, he was raised in the kingdom of Cryonin, which is an elven kingdom. Uh, north, north of Andorin. He uh, took after his parents, who Up were here. rangers. And uh, after his father was killed, he uh, oh. swore vengeance, and he's out on a quest to find the the goblin leader who killed his father. Ooh. And the goblin leader's name is Zook Bone Maw. Zook Bone Maw. I'll have to remember that. I guess I'll go next. Um, mine is Wolf Swift. He grew up in a small town that, or a small village that really never produced any great people till he was born and he had great magical abilities. Um, he went off to magic school and came uh, like Houdini to school and now he's out for adventure and bring glory to his village and his parents to honor them so is there anyone else we miss anybody uh mine yeah there you yeah. go I'm, hey. I'm sorry about that uh, uh I have a uh, Amon Jeb the uh rogue and Amon Jeb is the heir to a fairly wealthy family um, 
of the land of Jeb, which his ancestors uh, founded and established, and uh, he's many generations down, and didn't really grow up with any sort of conflict. Everything was, he had it pretty good. Uh, didn't really look at it, didn't really live a spoiled life, even though he probably could have, but it was more into running around in the fields and the woods and doing... I'm definitely alive. <laughs> uh, ...more human boy stuff than uh, elf children stuff. So uh, he decided that he went and had a talk with his folks and he wants to go out and see the world and experience it. And uh, So they came to an amicable agreement that he could go out and when he's finished and realizes that his place is to take over uh, their part of the land to to run it and expand it then come on back so he's kind of out just looking for whatever the world has to offer and uh at any time he can he could go back home if he just like ask her it I'm going home but he really wants to kind of he doesn't have anything to prove he just he just wants to see what's there and do whatever very nice I like it so you guys are in the sitting duck tavern uh, there's been a recent actually I'm gonna Talk about the the town of Sandpoint. Uh, that is a quaint seaside settlement that periodically has problems with monsters, such as wicked goblins and hungry ghouls. But the citizens always manage to endure and survive. Lately, however, a far greater danger has come to threaten the town. Several weeks ago, livestock started to disappear from nearby farms. Sometimes a half-eaten corpse is found. Sometimes only bloodstains. The people of Sandpoint are afraid and Mayor Kendra Deverin uh, has been growing desperate of a solution. She hopes some heroes uh, will volunteer to search out this menace and put an end to it before it kills a person. And this is the, the great thing about it. You all were, uh, there was a big announcement in the, the center of the town uh, and uh, you know she said if are there any basically are there is there anyone in the town that has the the you know the the you know the the, the might the courage to to test to see if we can find this this creature named black fang so all of you are the heroes that actually raised your hands and gimli says you have my axe and i you know all the other stuff so you know you guys have basically all gotten together uh, you've been kind of hanging out for the last several days uh, you've gotten all of your equipment and you know about the well I'm gonna finish reading this first uh, if you guys can actually pull this off you know that Kendra Deverin which is the the mayor of the town uh, you'll all get a thousand gold pieces to split up and uh, th this is a mysterious creature and nobody has seen this creature but a long black fang was found in one of the animal corpses on one of the farmsteads. So uh, this has prompted the locals to dub and coin the killer named Black Fang. So you know some rumors you've heard the last couple of days. Uh, several people have you've heard in the in the tavern itself in the Sitting Duck. You think uh, you, you may have a couple leads and rumors saying that Black Fang is possibly living in an old cave not too far from the town. Uh, they you know that this has housed several different types of monsters throughout the years, but Black Fang can now possibly be in there and whatever else that may be lurking. Are we talking to her? No, she's not in there. You guys are basically just congregating in the actual, in the sitting duck tavern, so. I'm messing around with my shoulder strap on my, uh, on my uh, shield. Make sure it uh, doesn't hitch on my armor. I have my chinchilla on my head. I'm smoking my pipe. 
Just sitting there staring at everybody else. I'd like to go over to one of the patrons there and uh, ask them if they know the way to the the cave. There are several people, several of the old timers, the old codgers of the town. They know where this cave is located, and there's one adventurer. Uh, he doesn't give you his name, but he's got like a like a, a, a white cloudy eye and, and a long scar that goes above his eyebrow, uh, through his eye, on his eyelid, and, and down his cheek. And he says, I, I've been in the cave before. Lots of goblins and orc in there. But that was many years ago. And he actually draws a, on a piece of paper, on a piece of parchment, he, he actually draws the location of the map for you. Well, the location of the cave uh, on a makeshift map for you. So, I got a map uh, parchment right here. Uh, why don't you write it down on here? And uh, I'll keep uh, notes and update it. And uh, we'll find it. Uh, you say it's up north? It's just directly off into the woods. Just basically, uh, it's in it's within uh, uh, probably uh, two, three miles away. It's to the east of Falcon's Hollow, up on the side of a up on the side of a ridge. You know where the where the actual the the ridge starts sloping up towards the Five Kings Mountains. So I mean, and Falcon's Hollow literally rests right on. You know the edge of the Five Kings Mountains border and and everything else. So you guys are basically, you know, right there on the mountains. You guys well, need to be bidding so in twenty-five to increments. Goblins All right, there you go. Next bidder town, is seventy-five. Anybody just right outside of the town. I'm sorry. What was that name, Isis? I said since it's so since the cave seems to be so close, I wanted to ask the ask the the warrior, if if the goblins ever come out and head towards town or on the road to the town, um, uh, between the cave and the town, he he tells you yes. Uh, in the past, we've we've had problems with with goblin and kobold and orc, but uh, the orcs don't come down from the mountains too much. But as of late, around the farmsteads. We don't even know if it's if it's the actual goblins or kobold. We we just don't know. But there was a huge fang found in one of the the actual cattle that was killed on the on the actual farmstead. So that's why they you know that's how they've come up with the the term that was coined black fang. So you guys Where's need to the fang now. Uh, it's uh, mounted on the wall. It's on a big. Any information, thousand gold. It's on a big plaque, and that's why you guys are congregated, and that's why you guys are together. You guys want that thousand gold bounty. How long is the thing? I'm sorry, you guys were all talking at once. Uh, you can get any pack that you want. I wanna... Oh, go ahead. I want to take a look at the thing and take it off the wall and examine it. Oh, it's yeah, actually it's, it's mounted. It's actually mounted on the plaque, but you're able to you're able to you know the, the plaque's not that heavy, but it is pretty big. The the it seems like the fang is about probably about eight eight ten inches long. It's pretty big. Would I know if this came off an animal or a orc or goblin? Well, uh, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you do a check. So this is we're gonna do a a full a full check right off the bat. So let's see. I want you to give me a let's see. I would say probably give me a knowledge nature. I would say give okay. me a nature check. Knowledge D20 nature. D twenty plus six? Uh D twenty plus whatever your nature skill is, yep. Pathfinder's got a lot of skills, don't they? And we're, we're not even using all of them, so... 14. You, you can definitely tell that this isn't a bear. This isn't even a like a large black bear or a large brown bear. So, uh, that's as much as about... That's about what you can tell. But you know that this is definitely a, 
some kind of large animal, but it is I'm definitely bigger than a bear. I'm going to do a roll. I got a plus one on nature. <clears throat> All right. If he rolls higher, I'm going to tear my hair out. He probably will. <laughs> you you think it's you think the it's... the canine of a large bear? Actually, I'm gonna. I want to roll. I've got a uh, plus four in local. In local? Okay. Okay. Yeah. You think it might possibly be a bear yeah. as well, but Kadojo, you think it's definitely a little bit larger than a bear. I, so I you guys are kind of disputing back and forth with one another. It's a bear. No, it's not a bear. It is a bear. It's not a bear. And uh, Flixlize just goes, I can't tell one one tooth from another, don't you? Hmm. Uh, don't you, Nolan? And the, and the uh, chinchilla just playing shakes a little bit. What we do know is whatever we're looking for is missing one of its canine teeth. And is very, very large. As the ranger comes over and looks at it, he says, I'll take a look and see what I think it is. I hope he rolls a one. It's going to be great. While he's looking at it, I want to find out from that warrior, that old man, where's this body at? I want to take a look at it. Maybe there's still some prints around the area. Fadakin went ahead, and Fadakin thinks it's like a dog or something. <laughs> With that roll of a three. <laughs> totally like that. <laughs> Never seen a tooth like that before. Uh, you think it's you think it's a bear as well. You're kind of siding on the side with a uh, with a gim. I kind of snicker and said, "We better like keep that chill away from Fredak. He might think that's it." Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. I ask old man, "Where are these well, bodies? Where's these bodies at uh, Veneta?" So five dollar pack, guys. We go to guys. the cave, guys, and just find this thing and. So we can get the money. Yeah, the the yeah. warrior tells you that uh, the cattle that the the few head of cattle that had been killed, the the owners of the the actual farmsteads that were involved, literally basically just had the the rest of the the carcasses butchered because they were so fresh, and they they basically donated it to the to other families in the town and and also saved some for their families as well. So. I asked the warrior, has there actually been any eyewitnesses? Well, the auction's going to go to the end of the night, guys. There are no eyewitnesses. Now, I actually had mentioned that in the dialogue. There's, There's been no one that's actually seen the creature visually. Oh, okay. Not even a shadow in that line. Not even a shadow. All right. Oh, God, well, it's better than Sasquatch. Well, let's, let's go on over to that there cave and... See if we can find ourselves a beast. I agree. I'm gonna go ahead, head on out the 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 sitting duck and get ready. Yeah, to the more you guys hang out in the channel, the you guys are gonna have the better odds. So that's just the way it is. I pick up my gear. The chinchilla goes into uh, into a safe spot in in uh, Rise's robe, and he follows you around. Follows you there. As you as you guys are walking out. The, the halfling bumps into the, the door on his way out, and you hear a squeal. Rawr! You actually bump the chinchilla into the, the door. <laughs> so you hear a little. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him and I said, If that thing gives us away while I'm, we're trying to stealth around, it's going to be an appetizer. <laughs> David Fox. Fart. The uh, halfling just looks at you with puppy dog eyes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go work with this me, bro. Great. <laughs> and these are all new players, guys. They're doing good so far. I'm having fun with this. I'll make him a tender little vittle. I kind of, I kind of <laughs> tell the rest of the group. I saw this, this, this new game once. It had to do with birds that are thrown at things. So. <laughs> Oh, I thought you were gonna say that the game where you you put like a a chinchilla or a small cat into a pillowcase and just spin it around real good for about a minute. I thought that was the game you were talking about. Oh, brother! <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, you guys 
gather up your gear and you make it uh, several miles to the east and I'm gonna put you on the new map this is y'all's first map whoop, whoop. alright you guys can put your you can put the map on about you can put it on about 80 90 that'll be a about a, a great size of the map it, you'll be able to see quite a bit so it won't be too large too small so alright so you get to the cave and at last the dungeon is in sight up ahead its interest looks more like a cave than the front of an underground fortress because back when you were at the the inn some people said oh yeah it's a it's a huge fortress gleaming on the side of the mountains and then, you know but of course you know there's a lot of ale flowing back and forth a lot of hell being consumed so you kind of really didn't you honestly didn't know what to expect